Okay, we're going to look at three more really neat offensive actions. The doublé, the redoublement, and the coupé. Let's start with the doublé. And once again, I've got Dante here. Once again, we're going to start from guard of three. And I'm going to do a beat attack. And now Dante is going to parry me. And I am going to do a deception, but I'm going to do it to the exact same line. So now Dante has to do a full counter parry, and I'm going to keep doing it. This is a doublé, where I do a disengage or a deception to the same line, necessitating that they do these full counter parries to try and catch it. Now, if I decide, I can then change to a different line, in which case he has to use a different parry, and then I can do a doublé in that line as well. And then I could even change it to a different line, and then he has to do different parries, and I could change to a different line, and now he has to do different parries. Yeah, go all the way across, all the way across on those parries. Good, there we go. And I can keep doing a duplay. So you can do a duplay in every single line there. Now, the tricky part is actually not doing the deceptions, but it's actually doing the parries. And as Dante was just doing an excellent job of, the defender really wants to show the audience that they have attempted to parry and failed. So these parries need to be a little bit bigger than normal. So this would be my normal parry, but if I know I'm parrying a doublé, I might really bring it out here to show, oh, I'm trying to catch this thing, but I am failing, and oh, now they're over here. Oh, I'm going to bring it all the way around. Oh, I'm going to try and parry that, but I keep missing. Now they're down here, and I'm going to try and parry that, and I can't, now they're over here, and I'm going to try and parry it, and I just can't. So that's actually going to be part of the drill that you're going to do. But that is the doublé. Now let's take a look at the redoublement now. And I'm actually not going to have you do a drill on this. We had you do redoublements earlier for the faint attacks. But here we are in guard of three. And it's basically the same premise. I stick my blade there. I pull back in this piston motion. And he keeps trying to parry. But he just can't because I'm using that redoublement motion. Bring the hand all the way across. There you go. So it's this piston motion of avoiding the parry with these redoublements. Okay? And the defense is exactly the same as the doublé. Now, here's, here's the really cool thing. And Dante asked a great question earlier, like, why would you do this? Uh, so here's the thing. Let's say we're, we're here at parry three, and I do this beat attack. Boom! And Dante parries me. And Dante knows that I'm going to try and do some kind of disengage or deception by bringing my blade down here. Well, what he can do is he can counter. Oh, crap! He parried me. All he needed to do is go down. I can try again. I'm going to go back the other way. And, ah, oh, he saw through my deceit again. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go the other way. Instead of going around his hilt, I'm going to go around the tip of his blade onto the other side. Now he has to parry here, and I can go back. Up, down, parry, up, down, parry. This is called the coupe. So a deception or a disengage goes around the hilt, but it can easily be countered, as Dante was doing earlier. Easily be countered. The coupe, on the other hand, goes around the tip of the blade. Now, we really only do this with the high line, because I'm using my entire wrist. So I'd like to show you the movement that the wrist makes here. So my hand is pronated for these. Your hand should be pronated, whether you're left-handed or right-handed. And the wrist simply moves up and then down, and up and then down. And we're making a triangle. So I'm here, and then I go up, and then I go down. And I'm making this triangle shape. OK, you can think of it as a, as a letter A or a tent frame or something like that and I'm going from one side to the next. And in that way, Dante, would you mind coming and standing directly in front of me here? And in that way, I go around Dante's face here. Yep, yeah, he parries, I go around his face, he parries, I go around his face, and so I'm never threatening his face. And it sounds even better if we allow there to be this resistance between the blades, and it just sounds really cool. We get that shink sound. Ping, shink, ping, shink. 
but I am definitely going around the face so as never to threaten his face. Thank you, Dante. Okay, so let's go through the drills that I would like to see you perform. First, I'd like you to show me the defense for a double. And you don't need to use footwork for this. You're going to parry, and then you're going to do full counter parry, and then another full counter parry, and then go to a different line. So I went from, I'm going from three to four, and then I'm going to parry, and then parry, and then parry, and now I'm going to go down to two, and parry, and parry, and parry. And I'm making these a little bit big and bringing the sword a little out, farther out than I normally would. And now seven, and parry, and parry. And then let's say you finally catch it at that point. So that's what I'd like you to show me for the double defense. And now I'd like you to show me some coupes, where I'd like you to start guard at three, I'd like you to do a beat attack, and coupe, 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 one more, coupe. So once again, guard of three, beat attack to their right shoulder, coupe to their left shoulder. They parry, coupe to the right shoulder, one more set, coupe to the left, and coupe to the right. That's it. Best wishes.